Hello, boys and girls. I found a very cool story called Sorry, Sorry Snail. And uh, I read it for the first time, and I liked it. It was something different. So I'm going to share it with you today. Sorry Snail. Ari was mad. She was not allowed to yell when upset, so she danced. Wiggle here, jiggle there, until she heard munch, 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 munch. Ari stormed up to find. <laughs> what? The snail. Munch, 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 munch. Ari whispered wildly, Look at that slimy body! That silly shell! Now, this is when... Now, this is when she, she got real, real close and did the whispers of whispers. Those tentacle eyes... Poor snail. I just can't look at you anymore, snail. Snail stopped munching and zoomed away. At a snail's pace, that is. That night, as Ari fell asleep, she heard the strangest sound. Ahem. <coughs> now, it is I who am quite upset. Harry peeked her eyes open. What? I said it is I who am quite upset, human. That snail just spoke. What are you doing here, snail? That's Miss Snail to you. My day was practically ruined because of your constant insults. That human is why I am aggravated. I request an apology Ari just wanted to sleep so um okay I'm sorry I guess Miss Snail's eyes telescoped into Ari's soul hmm Apology not accepted. Miss Snail slunk away, leaving Ari frozen and very awake. The next morning, Ari was greeted by Miss Snail. Snap. Yikes! Ari quickly scooted past Miss Snail into the playground. Ari made her way to the monkey bars and encountered ah, slime. Hmm. Ari looked up. Miss Snail again. Ari whispered loudly, Oh, Miss Snail, why are you doing this? Human, we snails live a simple life with no worries. Unless we are angrily whispered and whilst merely munching on our greens, I request an apology. But I said I'm sorry, Ari yelled. Ah, but you do not know that I saw into your soul and it whispered to me, 
I am not actually sorry. Suddenly, or rather slowly, hundreds of snails slid up from all the nooks and crannies to face Ari. Apologize to her friend. She's the best snail pal I've ever known. Cree, 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 cree. She's just the slimiest, the munchiest, the bestest. It is time for snaily justice, yelled Miss Snail. Ari could feel the rage manting from the Aragordi. The only thing she could do was run. Darn tootin'. Yeah. Ari's day was ruined because of Miss Snail and her friends' relentless behavior. She was feeling hurt. Get her. Miss Snail should really apologize to Ari. Ari. She deserves an apology. But then she was reminded of how she treated Miss Snail in the first place. Ari knew what she needed to do. She pulled out her chalk and got to work. She finished the moment the Escarai reached her. She finished the moment the Escurgatory reached her. Escurgatory. That's a fancy word. That's what I knew today. Snails, I have something to show you. She scooped up Miss Snail and lifted her high to see. Miss Snail, you are delightfully slimy. Your shell is beautiful. I love your tentacle eyes, most of all. I'm really, really sorry, Miss Snail. That warms my heart. Aww. Oh my. I'm sorry too. Yeah, we're all sorry. We got a little carried away. You have nice humanly eyes. And your dry skin is kind of refreshing. Ari looked into Miss Snail's soul, and Miss Snail looked into Ari's soul. And they both knew they really meant it. And Ari liked to dance when she was happy, and so did Miss Snail. So they wiggled and jiggled all the way home. Ari's night was just like any other, except this time she knew she had made a new friend. Pretty cool, huh? Sorry, Miss Snail. I like this one. This is a cool find. I found this in my library. And I found this one too. Um, I haven't read this one yet. It's called The Curious Garden. And the one thing that attracted me was the illustrations. Even just looking at these trees, you see that some are like, are like a bird over here. And then there's like a butterfly. So um, sometimes illustrations alone, I mean, look at this, can really bring you into a good book The Curious Garden. I mean, look at this. There's so much going on. You see the smoke coming out of the buildings? There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. However... There was one boy who loved being outside, even on drizzly days, while everyone else stayed inside. You could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. That's Liam. 
The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last thing he expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Those are cool plants. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned, and he had a few pruning problems. But the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. Now they say if you sing to your plant, it actually grows stronger. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener, and the plants began to feel like a real garden. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing relentlessly. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam the Curious Gardener explored every corner of the railway. Wow. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the rail railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for the spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt, and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Winter had taken a toll on the garden. But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up further and further from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old forgotten things. It does look cool, right? Flowers in an old broken down car. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Fire hydrant? Others mysteriously popped up all at once.
I think he's quite the gardener. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. Oh, other people are participating. Driving a picnic in the garden. Oh, that's cool. Look at that, the animal shapes. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed but of all the new gardens Liam's favorite was where it all began curious garden and I enjoyed it as I said the illustrations were what brought me in um, and then our last book for today is called up on Bob and uh, I think they're called schnauzers uh, these are really cool dogs a lot of people just call them hot dog dogs or no dash hound I think they're called a dash hound that's correct this is Bob Up on the bed, Bob has work to do. The work is hard, but Bob does not mind. Bob likes Hard work. Hard work pays off. There. Now everything is perfect. Whoa, taking a nap. Now Bob can sleep all day. Uh-oh. Suddenly, everything is not perfect. Someone is watching Bob. Bob cannot sleep if someone is watching. Shh. Lay still, Bob. Pretend you are sleeping. Maybe someone will go away. Is someone leaving? Is someone gone? Oh no. Pounce! That kitty wants to play. Up on Bob. Someone has work to do. The work is hard. But someone does not mind. Someone likes hard work. Hard work pays off. Well, oh, they're napping together. There. 
Now everything is perfect. Now Bob can sleep all day. Up on Bob. The Curious Garden. Sorry, Snail. Which one did you like the best? I like Sorry Snail. I thought that was interesting. All very good, though. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.